Hi, I'm Marcelo Antonelli, and I'm here today recording this video for World Class Coaching. And today we're going to be talking about the parallel. Um, you can call it a parallel pass or parallel ball, but either way, it's a very useful tool to connect on the field to create good habits on your players. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a video where we're going to be going over the concepts and over the parallel. So let's rewind here. Let's start over. So we have this methodology, soccer powered by futsal, where we're using those concepts, those strategies um, that are very common in the futsal courts, and you can also see a lot on the soccer field. So we're going to be in this video talking to you about um, how to get it done, what are the little details, that are important for the players to perceive and execute to successfully break lines and make this connection. So it's, it's very common in futsal. It's part of a, any futsal rotation, basically. And it can also uh, be applied following the same concepts on the soccer field. So you can see the example with Iniesta. Uh, in Messi for Barcelona. So let's talk more about it. Uh, how we can use the parallel in soccer and why that's important for a player's development. So first of all, uh, what's the parallel? So the definition that we made uh, using the concepts of futsal and bringing them to the soccer field is that it's a parallel pass to, uh, that the parallel is a pass parallel or almost to the sideline. Generally played outside of the defender pressure in the ball. And often it comes with a flick to avoid the defender's foot or to slow down the pass. So we can see a different example of it. You can see the pass is parallel to the sideline. Now, why is it important to development of players? Because you help players to find different alternatives, different ways to see space and connect. So most players are used to just training for given goals and through balls. So basically every passing lane that the uh, coaches do, um, you make players check in, check out, and then there we go. They do one, two, given and go, wall pass, however you like to, do, uh, to call it, and then through balls to get in behind. The problem many times with that, that players are not changing direction of their runs, are not finding creative ways to, to beat the defenders. So if you just keep it running here for the through ball and doesn't change direction, he would not be finding the space to receive that ball. Instead, with the change of direction, the defender get lost and they connect. So it allows players to get used to seeing the space outside of a defender. So if you think about this player here, this is the inside part of the field, and that will be outside. Normally, players are more worried about the inside towards the center of the field because that will be a given goal, that will be a through ball. Instead, with the change of direction from this player, this diagonal run for that parallel ball, you create that space to cause confusion on a defender. So same thing here. Normally, this player is worried about the center, the goal, the center of the field, about this through ball here. Instead, with this player making this run, like surfing the line and receiving outside, um, the pass isn't expected and the connection is made. Think about this. And he has to just play to Messi. And if Messi plays back here, there's no space. So the defender was expecting that given go, that the pass towards the inside. Instead, this ball is not going to come inside. It's going to come outside of the defenders. So Messi, with a simple pass, find Iniesta, and there you go. He gets inside the field. Here again, this will be the inside, right, from the perspective of this defender. This will be inside, and this will be outside. So with this diagonal run towards the outside and the parallel pass, the defender is not expecting that, and the connection is made. Uh, often, you can do that on the outside of the field, especially when you have, like, 2v2 scenarios. So example here, even playing out of the back. Uh, looking futsal, how it works. So 
as I said before, that's basically the ABC of futsal. The players are trained to not allow give and goes. So players making runs, make a change of direction to try to, it's not going to happen to receive this ball behind his defender. So he needs to make a change of direction. Same thing here. He's following, but no space in the middle. The only space is in the outside. One more time here, players close in the middle. They find his place in the outside. You can see the little flicks as well. Uh, you can see player changing direction. And then again, the little flick over the foot, slowing down the pass, creating enough space. You can see here on the soccer field, um, I think I have a replay here, this little flick to Lucas allow the ball to go over the defender's foot and slow down enough the ball that doesn't go all the way to the goalkeeper. Or another, or in that case, actually would be coming out of the field. Another example, again, Lucas in the same game made another diagonal run as opposed to going straight. He's making a diagonal run. In this case, there was no flick because it's a bigger distance. So the ball on the ground and found him on the run. Let's see a couple more examples uh, to make it clear how it uh, increases the width on the field. So if you just think about the pass inside, you just have this option here that can be closed. If you consider that change of direction here makes it way harder for the defender, he does not know if you can close the pass inside or outside. Change of direction, and there you go, you're getting behind. Same thing here, really tight space. The middle was closed, but with the player making the run outside, little pass, it got in behind. So basically it helps creating space. Um, and when this player makes this run towards the outside for the parallel, it also creates space for the inside. So we're not just talking about receiving a parallel, but maybe by moving here, you drag the defenders and open spaces towards the center. There you go, he makes his run, drag the defender, space in the middle for Salah to receive. Now, I'm gonna give a couple of important details uh, about the parallel. First of all, it's an alternative for the give and go, wall pass, however, you, uh, one, two, however you call it. So player is coming, this player doesn't ball watch, so he makes a change of direction. Look, no space for the give and go in the middle. So the player was running, but he's dropping. So the alternative here now is to change his direction. So if you change the direction, you find space towards the outside. So red's dropping, change the direction, and there you go. You find the space in the outside. So the run that was straight from the player becomes a diagonal run. Now, this might be a little harder to understand, but it's a very important thing. So when each player receives the ball from this player passes here and this receives the ball, the tendency is always to go like towards the inside. But by doing that, when this player comes outside, they become in line. If instead he learns how to move away from who he wants to pass to, he might create a better angle for the parallel ball. So that's the, the hardest part to teach players, not to always go towards where the pass came from, but sometimes moving a little wider to create that space. Now you can see a couple of different combinations of the parallel variations uh, with a little flick, very short distance uh, with a back heel. So in this case, it's Daniel Alves and Messi uh, using those combinations to create space. So this is one of the concepts that uh, very common in futsal uh, that we use uh, to connect. There's another one we're going to be showing here at the World Class Coaching as well. That's a diagonal ball. And uh, not just those concepts, many other things that are requirements in tight space that makes players uh, look about what the defenders do and based upon the behavior the defenders make those um, runs with change of directions or find spaces not just in behind but outside like the parallel ball or in front of the defender, like the diagonal ball, that we're also gonna show to you. So we hope uh, this video gives you some ideas to make exercises uh, on your own team, adapting to your own reality, and create creative players that will be very um, smart 
in terms of unbalancing the position defending. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. And uh, we'll be here at World, uh, World Class Coaching, or if you want, you can also check out Soccer Power by Futsal. Thank you.